Hi everyone, this is Dee, and uh, if you're like me, you may be wondering um, which of the apocryphal books or the non-canonical books can you read? Which, in other words, are accepted or acceptable to read? Because there are a lot of the apocryphal books that I wouldn't touch. I've looked at them, and I just get this no, you know, I get this, you know, the discernment kicks in. And I just get stay away from that or it's not true or I just get um, a shaking of my head and I just say I can't go on. And they're, and they're filled inside of the apocryphal gospels. You know, this is a book that I mentioned the other day along with um, the other book I mentioned from the library that I picked up was Lost Scriptures by a well-known um, author, Bart Ehrman. And he he goes into all these all this, you know, information about the... Nag Hammadi, the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, etc. But um, I just want to make a short um, video and just to say, if you're like me and you're wondering, you know, you've been studying the Bible for a number of years, you know, um, and you've come across these these names in the Bible, they're referenced. So what are the non-canonical books that are referenced in the Bible? So let's first start off again by just reading a, a short little um explanation of non-canonical. Uh, non-canonical books referenced in the Bible includes non-biblical cultures and lost works of known or unknown status. By Bible, by Bible, the Bible, is meant those books recognized by most Christians and Jews as being part of Old Testament or Tanakh, as well as those recognized by Christians alone as being part of the biblical apocrypha or of the deuterocanon. So I am starting out on this. I'm no, I'm not an expert. Um, like I mentioned the other day, you know, I read the book of Enoch, which is all about the watchers because it is referenced in the Bible. So that should give you a clue right there. If something that you're reading that's non-canonical and it's not included, um, it's not included in the uh, Bible. If you read it in the Bible, uh, in in my opinion, in, in, you know. I just feel that the Lord puts things for a certain reason. The Lord puts things uh, here for us for a certain reason. So if he references the book of Enoch, I say to, to go ahead and find out what did the watchers do. Um, and this gives an ex explanation. So I would definitely recommend the book of Enoch. And this is, um, Enoch is the grandfather of Noah. Um, there are, it is said by some, and not all, uh, some say that there are at least five non-canonical books that every Christian should read. And I don't know if I agree with that, but I do agree with the book of Enoch. The Gospel of Thomas. Well, I have it right here in both of these books that I took out from the library. Um, declared Gnostic text. And what is Gnostic? It, it just means Gnosticism was something that was early Christian, but it was uh, later called out as being heresy. In other words, uh, stay away from it. You know, it was it was heretical. Um it would eventually become the Orthodox Church. Gnosticism died out at some point, and many of their writings were lost, making discoveries such as the Gospel of Thomas of great value to the historical record. Well, okay, you could say it's great value to the historical record, and you might want to read it on your own, but once you start reading it, you know, you have to have that discernment to say, is this is what I'm reading real? Should I continue with this? And the next one is the Infancy Gospel, and I just say absolutely no. This is not important to read. It's like, this is focused on the life of Jesus as a child, believed to be dated back to the second century. Really? Do we have that kind of information? I don't know. Um, and have been written by Gnostic Christians. Again, there's that word, Gnostic Christians. So it, it was later found out that Gnostics were um, uh, heretical, uh, um, not to be believed. So this gospel was considered heretical in part for its depiction of Jesus Christ as a child. He was thought of as a very mischievous. He was, it was touted as being, he was a very mischievous, um, he had a mischievous streak. Um, and it, it was even told in one of the little stories, the little short stories that I read, that he killed someone as a child. So do we believe that? Again, you know, uh, we have to leave that up to our discernment. And I would say definitely not. It's, it's Gnosticism. So the Gospel of Mary, scholars don't always consider the Gospel of Mary to be a true gospel by the, um, 
because the text doesn't have the, the same focus on the teachings of the adult Jesus as the canonical Gospels. And that's what we need to consider. Otherwise, the Lord God uh, would have inspired the Holy Spirit to put it into our uh, you know, canonized Bible. We would have been able to, to see these things. There is a small reference in the Bible to Jesus when he was about 13 years old. Remember when he wandered away from, uh, from um, his mother Mary and his father Joseph? And they came after him looking for him after they couldn't find him. Now, that's just one little example. So we can we can consider that. But other things, it's very, very debatable. It also says there's a great deal of debate as to which Mary is the, is the narrator of the text. Which Mary? That's a good point. So they couldn't even d determine it. So moving right along here. Then there was the Acts of, of Paul. Apostle Paul with Thecla, and I never heard of this person before, but this details the life and journeys of the young Christian convert Thecla. Thecla was a young maiden who was engaged to a wealthy and powerful man in the city of Iconium. But when she heard Paul preaching about chastity, she refused to marry the man that she was married, that she was engaged to, or whatever, they were both together, and was sentenced to be burned at the stake. And then it says, God, however, intervened and saved Thecla's life. Then she joined Paul on his journey to Antioch. You know, so there's just another example. Is it is it true? We don't know. It's interesting to take note of, and it's, it's really good to challenge your discernment, because I always pray, Lord, let me use my discernment and give me razor-sharp discernment. So Christians can read certain... Um, uh, certain books, certain of these, you know, certain apocryphal books, non-canonical books, due to the tireless work of translators. Uh, more ancient texts continue to be translated today, and more hidden gospels continue to be found. So, in other, in other words, you know, they are they're digging up more and more stuff. So that's great. Uh, which books are mentioned both in the Old Testament and the New Testament? This is what we want to pay attention to. What's referenced in our Bible? The Book of Jasher. For example, is mentioned in Joshua 10:13 and 2 Samuel 1:18, also referenced in 2 Timothy 3:8. 3, 8. So uh, there's two examples: Old Testament and New Testament. Book of Jasher, I would say, yep. Put a check mark next to Book of Jasher. You can definitely read that. Several books have been claimed to be the lost text, some of which are discounted as pseudopigrapha. It's a long word. It just means uh, falsely attributed works. So you have to be careful of these things that are uh, listed as pseudopigrapha because they are pretty much falsely attributed works. They might sound intriguing, but they're not true. So the next one I came across, and uh, it's just mentioned in Numbers in the Old Testament. The Book of the Wars of the Lord is mentioned there in Numbers 21.14. It is speculatively associated with, with one of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the War of the Sons of Light against the Sons of Darkness. Also, this is cited in the book of Jasher. Moses and Samuel, chapter 90, uh, verse 48, as being collaborative, a collaborative record of Moses and Joshua and the children of Israel. So, I would say book of Jasher, Enoch, that's two. Uh, now, these just are all Old Testament that I'm going to just reel off to you. And if you're interested, great. Go get go for them. You know, they're online or whatever. The, the Chronicles of the, of the Kings of Israel. That was mentioned, uh, and the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah are mentioned in the Book of Kings. Um, I, I won't go through the whole thing, but it's um, the Acts of Solomon is referenced in 1 Kings. The Annals of King David referenced in 1 Chronicles. The Book of Samuel the Seer uh, could be the same as 1 and 2 Samuel. They don't know. The scholars don't know that. It's referenced at First Chronicles. So these, these, there's just a, such a long list, you know, of all these books that you could get, the apocryphal books. But these in particular are mentioned in our Bibles, okay, but in the Old Testament only. So that's what I would take into consideration. Is it Old alone or is it Old and New Testament? So the book of Enoch was referenced to us in Jude 1.4, 1.6, 1, 1.13, 1, 1.14, and 15. 2 Peter 2, 4, and 3, 13, and in John 7, 38. So the book of Enoch, I give it a check. Apocryphal of Jonas and Jambres. Uh, this is um, Jonas and Jambres, I guess, withstood Moses. And this is mentioned in 2 Timothy 3, 8. So there's another apocryphal book you can get and read about it. 
the life of Adam and Eve. It's mentioned in 2 Corinthians 11.14, as well as Satan being an angel of light. The Book of Wisdom. Now, there's, there's Wisdom, and then there's the Book of Wisdom by Tobit. Uh, that's a whole different category. I don't know about that one. However, 1 Maccabees and 2 Maccabees, that's, this is about the Feast of Hanukkah. And this is mentioned to us in the New Testament in John 10, 22 through 36. It comes from the events in um, the first Maccabees 4, uh, chapter 4, 36 through 59, and second Maccabees 10, 1 through 8. It's the rededication of the temple. So I think that's important. So John 10, 22 through 36. This is important. I would say check for Maccabees and second Maccabees. Now there are, in, in the Bible gate that I got online, they mentioned the wisdom books. What are the wisdom books? Wisdom is a convenient umbrella term to designate the books of Job, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, or Koheleth in Hebrew, Wisdom, and Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus. Now, there's also Psalms and the Song of Songs, collection of love poems. And that's all that I wrote down. So, there are a couple of, there are a few books, and I did read the book of Enoch, not the third book. I read the first book about the watchers and I did read the second book. So um, I'll probably just, you know, continue sorting out things in this um, uh, and just, you know, I, I wanted to read something, but I don't think I have enough time. So the next video. Okay. Thank you again for joining me and you can just wait for the um, translation, uh, the, the transcripts rather. Wait for the transcripts to come out, and then you can write this stuff down. Okay, thanks. Have a blessed afternoon, everybody.